What's going on everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the coach actually no the final episode of the coach Grossman Dynasty here on NCAA 14 using that college football revamp of course and we jump into you know some uh, some key offseason uh, highlights you know for you guys as well as you know, I'm going to drop some info about the next NCAA 14 series that is going to be coming to the channel. So it's going to be a very exciting episode. I hope you guys are down for it. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, and hit that subscribe button as well. Shoot, even hit that notification bell because sometimes YouTube be a little ho, man, in terms of getting videos out to you guys. But with that, we'll go ahead and jump into... Some highlights of the national championship game between the Ohio State Buckeyes and another Ohio team from the MAC Conference, the Miami Red Hawks. Not Miami, Florida. Oh no, we have the Miami Red Hawks here, man. So I'm going to jump right into it. Check out the uh, one of the, your guys' custom prospects that are playing in the national championship game. It's not a Saba. Almost, 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 almost had himself a touchdown there. But, I mean, we knew that this game was going to be uh, a bloodbath, potentially. And right now, it's kind of shown to be that way. I mean, even though Miami, I gotta admit, has some really nice uniforms. And, I mean, you can see more of those. Like, if you like Miami Red Hawks football, I know my, my guy, Big C, you know, got himself a Miami Red Hawks dynasty on his channel. Y'all should definitely check that out, by the way, if you haven't already, right? But... Yeah, man, that being said, uh, Ohio State, man, they just, they got so many guys on this team. It's absolutely ridiculous. It It's turning into a buzz. Now Saba does eventually find the end zone in this game. It's now a 45-13 to 13 blowout, right? And we didn't even get out of the third quarter. But, yeah, man, here we are in the fourth. You know, see uh, if uh, any more points can be scored. How about what happens here? Check this out. Matt Barber pitches it. In a Reggie Bush kind of style. And it actually works. So Nadasaba ends up scoring a 75-yard touchdown in the national championship game. Because Mad Barber had the awareness that like, hey, Nadasaba is not covered. I can pitch it still. And he does. And everyone's still committed to that. Quarterback, man, it, it's barbecued chicken, right? So... Ohio State at least puts the 50-burger up, but more, more importantly, wow, words are extremely hard, but yeah, man, it ends. they end up winning the national championship in really uh, uh, just, just in tremendous fashion. I, mean, I don't even have the words for it. That speed option does end up also being the player of the game, so Nadasaba does get featured as a player of the game, ends up uh, dropping a ton of points on Miami as well they just were completely overmatched in this game and I mean no shame I mean they made their way to the national championship game that is not an easy thing to do but not Saba does not get named player of the game that goes to Matt Barber who had close to 400 yards of total offense all by himself in Ohio State here in season number eight they are national champions winning and convincingly so how about this for an interesting stat for you guys, right? So, Joel Nadasaba ends up with over 200 yards rushing, despite the fact that he only had two rushes for more than 20 yards in this game. He did have that long of 75 that was set up by the speed option, which really Reggie Bush-like, if you think about it, except it actually ended up working. Dude ends up with 25 carries for 216 yards and two touchdowns. Not to mention getting a couple of receptions as well. Going for 26 yards. And it does end up leading to a national championship. A well-deserved national championship for Ohio State. But welcome to what is a little bit of a unique episode. As we're kind of putting a nice little bow tie here, man. And I want to quickly run through how our team did over the course of the season now for sawyer thompson you know his stat line was really ugly i mean 13 touchdowns 16 interceptions that's not ideal but he did end up getting better as the year went on and showed his mobility as well ending up with eight rushing touchdowns you know over the course of the season 
he does get himself boosted up to a 91 overall so he is bound to get better moving forward um but that being said you know the play that we had the quarterback position was why we did not win the national championship in our final season as head coach but that being said though our running game was really good uh andrew smith ended up with almost 1500 yards of rushing and 11 touchdowns he was an absolute stud uh one return man of the year award last year he stepped in this is really his first and i guess only year as he's starting tailback for us and should be somebody that does get himself into the nfl but yeah man that that passing attack that passing time was absolutely rough, rough for us this year and you know what's bad when you have the kind of weaponry that we have on this team and we didn't even have a single thousand yard receiver right uh the closest that we had was jeremy tate he ended up with 40 catches 480 yards and a couple of touchdowns you know definitely a regression from last season where he had almost 1300 uh receiving yards and four times as many touchdowns so yeah we were definitely hurting from that perspective but defensively though defensively we did uh look really good uh once again we did have a top five defense in america uh and that defense really showed out in that peach bowl that we had in the last episode uh tj bailey did lead the lane tackles he ended up with 71 total tackles with matt mays not being too far behind he ended up with 67 himself and as for sex you know marcus johnson you know did have a little bit of a regression but i mean he still had a very good season eight and a half sacks and he does end up winning the labardi award for a third year in a row uh did not win the nagurski this time around that does go to the best defensive player but you want to talk about somebody that is definitely a candidate to be uh to declare for the nfl draft early and probably be like a, at least a day two pick you know you really have to look at marcus johnson in this situation you know he was special uh kevin davis really stepped up and so did tj bailey they both each had seven sacks not as much pressure that we generated since we did end up having more uh you know games simulated than we do in actual gameplay but the defense still really stood up and that's a really good sign for us eric smith ends up being the uh joe for paying jim for pay award winner he ends up with six interceptions that doubles what he had last year uh really stepped up uh since we did lose some considerable talent in the secondary matt ratliff being a notable piece tyrell booker did also have multiple interceptions and the same thing could be said for true freshman carlos smith he ended up with two ints one of which he did at least return for a touchdown zach harris had a couple nick alexander also ended up with a couple as well so you know very good job of really forcing turnovers over the course of this season also had plenty of forced fumbles we forced six fumbles uh, over the course of the season and we end up recovering five of them eric gunn and matt mays recording a couple with zach harris uh recording a fumble himself but and we ended up with three total defensive touchdowns this year now i know carl smith had one of them because we saw one of them in gameplay for sure but i didn't realize he had a second touchdown as well so he he was really a special player uh really in a in true freshman class i mean dude is 98 speed i mean he really utilized that athleticism extremely well and then tyro booker you know ended up i believe with a pick six as well so again really good season uh i do have a google sheets for how your guys custom prospects did over the course of the year so that will be down in the comment section as a pinned comment if you want to see how your uh custom player did or if you want to know really uh how your guy ended up doing uh in terms of if you want to just ask me is what i'm saying uh i can always just tell you that as well that that's really isn't that big of a deal but this right here is really interesting so we you know had the same level of talent as we did last season but we end up with more pros which is really interesting to me you know had a lot of guys go in the first and second round a uh, few fourth round guys in there as well so a very uh, star-studded uh senior class but one person like i said marcus johnson did declare for the nfl draft and he's projected to go as a second round pick and because he is at least a day one or a day two pick he will uh we're gonna let him go um these three guys would more realistically not 
necessarily uh leave um just because you know you know your day free pick uh most day free picks uh, don't like make it through uh the nfl like first two or three years so for realism standpoint even though we aren't uh, uh this is our last year with them they are uh we're gonna get them to stick around uh but one person that is going to leave the team uh is mike johnson uh he we did uh trying to redshirt him but you know he's trying to play early i mean the dude has too much talent right you know he's got 88 speed he's extremely athletic and i mean there's just a it's a crowded quarterback room right now and unfortunately it's gonna have to be thinned out uh because of how we need to uh um he just needs to go somewhere else to play but that being said we do have some of your customs at least uh moving out and uh going to greener pastures danny daniel for example he is going to graduate he is not going to at least be drafted into the nfl he was always a solid kicker uh 62 for 86 uh 72 percent field goal percentage uh was 98 percent on extra points so you know very solid player um played in uh you know was a four-year starter obviously you know spent a lot of time uh, in that pro in the colorado program and saw some decent success with him now something that does also surprise me as well is ivan bone with nfl status you know you want to talk about a guy ends up with 10 and a half sacks in his senior campaign you know obviously has the size for the nfl level but that being said you know not going to be drafted despite the fact that he does have 10 and a half sacks so that is an interesting surprise but i'm sure things will change as uh people that were going to go to the nfl uh they end up staying but florida state did have a few nfl players as for the missouri tigers they definitely had a really tough season finishing just three and nine but one bright spot was tyler mcmullen who had nearly a thousand yards receiving this year along with eight receiving touchdowns and you know dude's a 91 overall he's a very good player and he's gonna get his nfl shot he's projected to go into the seventh round and he is actually the only player on the missouri football program that is you know planning on going to the nfl they have a really good quarterback in Derek gardner who's a 99 but he is not going to get that nfl shot which is really strange to me personally but i mean it is what it is congrats to custom prospect tyler mcmullen though on achieving his nfl dream another receiver that is projected to go to the nfl is devin carson Devin Carson had a very solid career at North Carolina, played for three seasons. His last season, he did end up with 75 catches, over a thousand yard receiving, as well as nine touchdowns to go with it as well. He also ends up uh, with uh, like a longest reception of 74 yards as well. Did have more drops than he did in years past, but 95 overall, that is going to project him as a second round pick, another custom that goes to the nfl speaking of offensive weapons that are nfl bound james skaggs is projected to go into the fifth round now this is really interesting to me he was somebody that did not necessarily uh show out in the bowl game uh he didn't record any stats whatsoever but despite that i mean dude has a 99 awareness you know he knows what he's doing a uh, very smart kid a very good blocker as well uh which is why he's up here uh, to go with it not the most athletic tight end but somebody that can definitely help in the running game and that value is going to show as a third day pick you know projected to go into the fifth round now this shouldn't come as any much of a surprise but the defending national champions the ohio state buckeyes they do uh, end up with some really uh good pro picks you know looks like six guys going to the nfl one of which uh, actually two running backs uh joel Natasaba and marion perry that is a unique combination right there uh seeing two running backs drafted in the same round from the same university but Natasaba definitely deserves it you know ends up with two 1000 yard campaigns i uh, had also two separate seasons where he had double digit touchdowns this year being a career high 1400 yards rushing on the ground and then also chipping in with a near career high in receiving yards as well ends up with 375 receiving yards and a couple of touchdowns he's projected to go into the third round for Ole Miss Mason Warner was a guy who 
you know, he was a solid player. You know, he never had a thousand yards, but he had two very good campaigns in a very tough SEC conference. And after he hits his senior year, this was his last year on the field. He is projected to go into the fourth round. Another wide receiver that's a custom that gets to experience the NFL. Now, you guys saw during the custom prospect special that Texas State had a really special year. They end up winning double-digit games and then winning the Fiesta Bowl against Kansas State. But despite that, no NFL players from Texas State. Now, that, now I thought that was really interesting. Although, to be fair, it looks like they're a young team. So that's the scary part. Uh, Texas State could very well get better uh, in future seasons. But Michael Jackson is not going to go to the NFL. He had a solid career, though. Uh, ends up with over 100 pancakes while only allowing 22 sacks as a four-year starter. Now, the last custom guy that I want to talk about that is going to be moving on to greener pastures is Mitch Steele. Mitch Steele at 6'1", 204 pounds. You know, he, he had some big shoes to fill. He had to replace Timmy McClain, and he was a three-year starter. He was solid uh, in those three seasons, you know, hovering around 3,000 yards a season. Uh, had the hard time winning the big game, and I think that's what maybe held him back from ultimately going to the NFL, but he was a very good QB, and while he couldn't completely fill the shoes of Timmy McLean, he what he certainly did was be a very good quarterback for the Southern Florida program. So where we last left off, there were still two players that needed to be signed, and they ended up signing here on signing day. Jody Gentry was one of them. He was the number six wide receiver in this recruiting class and narrowly chose to go to Florida they won by just 700 points. And then for the other custom that didn't really uh, sign on the dotted line until signing day, we got Screenshot James, who he was in a recruiting battle with Charlotte, Virginia, Maryland, and Vanderbilt. But Vanderbilt is going to come out on top, and they get a nice linebacker to complement that defense. Now, that being said, even though that this is not going to be this is actually going to be the final episode of this series specifically, but this is not going to be the final episode of this particular Dynasty file that I'm using. You see, the next NCAA 14 series I'm going to do for the channel is also going to use this same Dynasty file. So we're going to be in the same universe, except there's going to be a few changes going on around in the NCAA. So that being said, around this time as this video is dropping i do have a community tab post that is on my channel community tab it's going to be a poll with five teams that i have it narrowed down to that will be at least the next starting point for our next series so make sure you go ahead and check that out and i'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description but with that being said guys i just wanted to thank you guys so much for supporting this series it has truly been an amazing experience it's been a really fun experience and i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new this is john j gaming on the mic signing off and i'll see you guys for the next ncaa series on this channel man but but with that i hope you're all out there taking it easy take care everybody